Tastes differ. Some of us care only for comfort. A few years later, we get a thrill out of a knee action ride. As we grow older, some of us are willing to do anything for safety. It doesn't offer much in comfort, but it may be what you want if you're taking a million dollars for a ride. But not everybody has a million dollars to ride. Economy is what they want. Some people want speed, but those who go after all there is sometimes have to sacrifice safety. Well, speed isn't everything. Give this driver plenty of power and he's happy. But who wants to take his Sunday afternoon ride in a tank? Most of us want a balance of all these features in the car we drive. We want the best possible combination of comfort, safety, economy, speed, and power. And we don't want any one of them built into our car at the expense of any others. It is easy to build a freak car, one which emphasizes certain characteristics at the expense of others. Take comfort, for example. Probably an ambulance gives the utmost in motor car comfort. Yet, who wants to ride around in an ambulance? If you're willing to sacrifice speed and make a pretty good initial layout and expense, you can have all the comforts of home in a car. Might be a little trying along city streets, but you can turn on the radio or read the evening paper and forget all about your fellow motorists. And if things get too hot with the traffic cops, you can always jump in a nice cool shower and wash your troubles down the drain. However, with such a car, you would sacrifice speed, pep, and economy. A record-breaking car like Sir Malcolm Campbell's Bluebird is what you want if you hanker after speed. Of course, it needs special tires, special spark plugs, special carburetors, special everything, and you'll manage to get only about a mile and a half on a gallon of gas. Safety? The driver of this car is taking no chances. Those hips? No, they aren't the natural contours. The trousers are made extra specially large so he can carry his own upholstering. Such a car needs a special battery setup to start the engine. And incidentally, you have to carry a good-sized crew of mechanics whose wages along with the repair bills, run into pretty heavy money. All the power is at high speeds. You could build high speed into any passenger car today, but in doing so, you would sacrifice safety, comfort, and economy. One of these English pygmy cars will give you supreme economy, if that's what you want in an automobile, that is provided you can squeeze into it. They can run around all afternoon on a gallon of gas. Built light, they get along on two cylinders, and sometimes on three wheels, but you don't catch them burning up the roads. You'll have to shift gears for the ordinary dips in the pavement. When you come to a real neat hill, you have to get out and push. And when you get out in the traffic with the bigger boys, look out. Such a pygmy car would give you economy, but only that. You would have to do without speed, performance, comfort, and safety. A 10-ton truck will give you the ultimate in a really powerful car. It may be a little cumbersome and hard to steer, but if you have arms like this fellow, you won't mind that. Of course, they happen to be rather expensive, for more power in the engine means an increase in its size. The motor, clutch, transmission, and gear train in any car must be made of special high-priced steel. So increase in size means more weight 
and more expense. And incidentally, that big gas tank isn't just for looks. A manufacturer can build any of these characteristics in exaggerated degree into a car. He can make his car a palace, a racer, a midget, or a truck. But he's building a freak, a car with certain characteristics emphasized at the expense of others. As practical motorists, we want a car that gives us complete comfort, with plenty of speed, all the power we'll ever need, the utmost in economy, and of course, the maximum of safety. We want not one or two, but all of these, and in the best possible combination. In other words, we want the balanced car. <laughs>